Good morning. My name is Jim Quick. I'm the plant director here. Mike Plater is joining me here on stage, chairman, of local UAW 22. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Welcome to Detroit Ham Tramic, local 22. Thanks for coming today. And on behalf of all General Motors, uh, we certainly appreciate everybody taking time out of their busy schedules today to be here for uh, a really special announcement. We've got a lot of people here today, and uh, a lot of them are going to speak. So if you wouldn't mind, I want to go through the list, and then after we get done with the list of recognizing all the special individuals here, then we can give them a round of applause if you don't mind. So first of all, we're excited to have Governor Whitner, Whitmer here, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, Congresswoman Tlaib, Wayne County Executive Evans, Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan, and Hamtramck Mayor Karen Majewski, State Representative Robinson, Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity Director Donna Frio, MEDC Director Mason, Congresswoman Lawrence, and Congressman Levin. We're also pleased that we have representatives from the offices of Senators Peters, and Stabenow, as well as representatives from the office of Congresswoman Dingle, Stevens, and Slotkin, and also representatives from Congressman Mitchells. Here on behalf of the International Union, uh, Vice President Terry Dittis, who couldn't make it today, Dwayne Hawkins, service and rep. Also on behalf of uh, Region 1, Director Frank Stuglin, Ron DeMauer here is in servicing, and also Todd McDaniel from uh, Vice President's office. Thank you. Please give a round of applause for all of our distinguished guests. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce our President of General Motors, Mark Royce. Um, boy, what a great day, and good morning, everybody. And thank you for joining us uh, today to celebrate some great news for General Motors, for Michigan, and for our terrific Detroit Hamtramck Assembly Facility. First, on behalf of GM senior leadership, I'd like to thank Governor Whitmer and the state of Michigan for helping to make today's news a reality. Thank you. I'd also like to thank Congresswoman Tlaib and Lawrence and Congressman Levin for being here with us today. Thank you. We really appreciate all the partnerships that we have. We also appreciate the officials from GM UAW International and Local 22 being here today. You make it happen. And just so you know, our employees are watching this event live on TV all across the plant. We are so proud of what they have accomplished here. As most of you know, GM's vision of the future is all electric, a world with zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. And today's news is this, the future is here and now. I am pleased to announce that General Motors is investing $2.2 billion in this Detroit Hamtramck assembly plant to build a new generation of electric pickup trucks, SUVs, and other EVs beginning late, just this next year. This move will create more than 2,200 jobs. In addition, we will invest $800 million at other sites to support electric vehicle production here at Detroit Hamtramck, which will become our first dedicated all EV assembly plant. This will be General Motors' most technically advanced assembly plant. That's really amazing. In addition to that, um, we are also announcing today that one of the EVs to be built here is the Cruise Origin, the shared electric self-driving vehicle that we unveiled just last week in San Francisco. That will be built right here in Detroit and Germany. The other EVs built here will start with the all-electric pickup due in late 2021. And we've already seen unsubstantiated speculation about names and brands and all kinds of rumors. But today, I can definitely tell you this. The Super Bowl matchup Sunday between the Chiefs and the 49ers shapes up to be a classic 
and you should all tune in. <laughs> I can also tell you that like those two teams, the electric pickups we will build here will be the best players on the field. All right? Our offering won't be just one pickup. This is architected to be scalable and used for multiple brands with multiple variants with multiple customers. We'll offer different ranges of performance at different price points to meet customers wherever they are. If the customer wants a basic package, we'll have that. If the customer wants true off-road capability and towing capability, we'll have that too. Our electric pickup will do everything a customer wants a pickup to do and much, much more. Whether or not we are the first on the market, I don't know, but I am confident that we will be the best on the market for sure. And that's just the beginning. We'll be introducing multiple models a year as market responsive as anyone in this business can be. In fact, we will beat and be more agile than many that have shown things in the past. Our electric vehicle program is unmatched in the industry in terms of our combination of advanced technology, flexibility, speed, and scale. We will have a complete lineup of EVs, including the pickup truck and its stable mates with multi-brand, multi-segment applications. These products will be powered by some of the best EV technologies in the world. Our highly advanced batteries developed at our battery lab in Warren, Michigan. Our battery electric chassis with world-class range ride and handling. And our new electrical architecture that provides the bandwidth and connectivity to support the most sophisticated electric propulsion systems and active safety systems. Those technologies and more will be on full display when our EVs start rolling out in the near term across our lineup around the world. We'll be the first full-line OEM to vertically integrate and manufacture battery cells at our joint venture with LG Chem, and we have given the scale to provide EVs the mass market, given our strength in North America and China. We are truly building the future today, and we're doing it here in our hometown and our home state, just up the road from our world headquarters. I'd like to say again that the support and commitment demonstrated by the state of Michigan was crucial to making this investment possible. In fact, the city of Detroit was very instrumental, Mayor Duggan, in that as well. GM is just as committed to at our home state where we have more than 48,000 employees at 30 facilities. And we are committed to making sure Michigan remains at the epicenter of the global automotive industry as we continue our journey together to an electrified future. Since the fall of 2018, GM has announced investments of more than $2.5 billion in Michigan to bring EVs to market, including the Warren Battery Lab I mentioned, as well as our battery plant in Brownstown Township, our Orion Assembly plant just up the road, and now right here in the center at Detroit Hamtramck. I should also point out that we remain fully committed to America as well. General Motors has invested more than $24 billion in our U.S. plants since 2009. Here at Detroit Hamtramck, the majority of the investment will go towards renovation of the paint and body shops and the General Assembly area, which will receive incredibly comprehensive upgrades, including new machines, conveyors, controls, tooling, and a bunch of stuff that I don't want to talk about because, again, this will be our most high-tech facility in the world right here in Detroit. One of the key reasons we're so confident in our new electric trucks is the incredible team that we will have building them here. It is a big competitive advantage for us to have a proven, world-class workforce that knows how to build great vehicles with extremely high quality. This plant has built more than 4 million vehicles since it opened in 1985. 4 million vehicles came out of this plant. And I am truly grateful and excited that Detroit Hamtramck will lead us into the future of transportation starting today. So thank you again for being here this morning. I couldn't be more excited for everybody, for our team here, all of our workforce, our company, the state of Michigan, the city of Detroit, and all the investment that go around in the supply base when we open this plant. And now I'd like to introduce my colleague and very good friend who's had a lot of shared experiences right in this plant, 
our Executive Vice President of Global Manufacturing, Mr. Gerald Johnson. Gerald? Heck of a way to start your Monday out. Good morning. And not just good morning to the room, but good morning to the Detroit Hamtramck workforce that I understand to be watching by video as well. Let me start off by acknowledging the leadership of Jim Quick and Mike Plater. Your leadership here has enabled this to happen. And I really respect and appreciate what you guys are doing to create the environment for a future that only can be done by General Motors. So roughly about three years ago, 2017, we put out our mission statement, zero, zero, zero. Zero crashes, zero emissions, zero congestion. And quite frankly, people didn't know what that looked like, what that really meant. It was a change from being you know, the world's leading transportation uh, services and related uh, components. It was a big change, and it spoke to a reimagined future. Zero, zero, zero will come to life right here at Detroit Hamtramck. Zero crashes. Imagine a world where people don't have accidents. In 2019, there were roughly 36,000 people who died in a car accident. Imagine the world would be different with those 36,000 people still here and those families intact. That's the world we imagine and mission towards. Imagine a world where our carbon footprint is zero. We have no effect on the planet. The electric vehicle that we're going to build here at Detroit Hamtramck speaks to, puts wheels on that mission as well. And now imagine a world with zero congestion. I spend 45 minutes coming and another 45 minutes going home at the end of the day. That's an hour and a half of my life that I commit to driving. There's a future out there where an autonomous vehicle like the Origin that we're going to build here at Detroit Ham Tramic will make that time more mine again. Our most precious commodity, time. I visited an auto leaf uh, component plant not too long ago. I was actually there talking to the leadership team and then going out to visit the plant. And AutoLeave is one of our suppliers. They build uh, windshields, they build airbags. But if you talk to any employee at AutoLeave and say, what do you do? They say, I save lives. Same is true if you go and talk to anyone at NASA. What do you do? I send people to the moon. Well, the day has come where GM employees, and specifically here at Detroit Ham Tramick, can say that and more. What do you do at Detroit Ham Tramick? I save lives with the safety systems I installed in the vehicles we, we build and ship. I save the planet because I'm building an all electric vehicle that has a zero carbon footprint. And I save you your most precious commodity. I save you time because you will ride in an autonomous vehicle like the Origin and be able to do more things with that time, that 45 minute drive, than you can do today. I am so proud of the General Motors organization, a reimagined future from the Rensen, re-engineered and redesigned at Warren, and built right here at Detroit Ham Tramming. Welcome to the future now. This is it, this is us, and I'm so grateful that there'll be 2,200 employees here in the not too distant future, building exactly what we're talking about here, an electric future. Zero, zero, zero. Welcome to the future, y'all. <laughs> now I'd like to invite to the podium our governor, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Governor? Thank you, Gerald. That was fantastic. I am thrilled to be here with all of you today. Um, this is a great moment for the state of Michigan, the city of Detroit, the county of Wayne, and for everyone who calls this great state home and the wonderful people that are going to build this, the machines coming out of this plant. We're building a new chapter in Michigan's heritage in automotive manufacturing today. Over the past 30 years, Detroit Hamtramck became a critical part of the Hamtramck community providing careers for thousands across our nation and region. People moved here from all over the world because they knew they could get a great job in the auto industry and build a prosperous life in this state for themselves and their families. The auto workers at this facility helped build the middle class in the state of Michigan and in the United States. They're some of the toughest, smartest, hardworking people in the world. 
and they make the best cars on the road right here in Michigan. So I'm proud to be here today with GM, bringing 2,000 good pain manufacturing jobs for our auto workers and getting Hamtramck back online, helping to bring the vision of an all-electric future to life. This announcement is good news for our hardworking union members, UAW, their families, and for our economy as a whole. GM has committed to investing $3.5 billion in Michigan over the next decade, including today's $2.2 billion investment at DHAM. This investment comes on the heels of a series of big auto announcements here in Southeast Michigan that have created thousands of jobs for the people of our state. Everyone knows that Michigan is the birthplace of the auto industry. We have the talent, the know-how, and the ecosystem necessary to lead the charge on the next generation of manufacturing and transportation. Today, we're showing the world that the vehicles of the future will be built, tested, and deployed right here in Michigan, cementing our status as a global leader in automotive manufacturing, future mobility, and high-tech industries, and sending a powerful message that Michigan, the state that put the world on wheels, remains the automotive capital of the world. All of the leaders here today are working hard to make sure that we build a state in which more businesses want to invest and that hard work is paying off. This is what the future of mobility looks like, putting our manufacturing might to work in GM's first fully dedicated electric vehicle assembly plant in the U.S. Michigan is open for business. Michigan is the place of the cars of the future, and we are making the case stronger today with this announcement. Now I'm going to continue to the work to make sure that we can drive these great vehicles on roads that are worthy of them. You knew I wasn't going to not say that, right? So Mark can rest easy at night knowing that General Motors cars will be safe from potholes and our citizens will, most importantly. So to all the hardworking men and women who are going to build these cars, thank you for your dedication. Thank you for the commitment for General Motors, and I'm excited about this next chapter for DHAM. This is a great day for the state of Michigan, and now I actually have a reason to watch the Super Bowl, too. <laughs> With that, I would like to hand it over to um, the county executive, my friend Warren Evans. Thank you. I noticed that along with the uh, um, electric vehicles, we'll have some uh, for off-road use that will get us through the potholes until we can get the roads fixed. Uh, it, it is absolutely great to be here. I've been smiling ever since I heard uh, about this investment. Uh, thank you, General Motors, for the faith in Wayne County and the city of Detroit. Uh, thank you, UAW, for the work you do. Uh, it is important that, and I think people can see it more and more as these things happen, that the leadership of people like Mayor Duggan uh, and the governor with the incentives necessary to help get this started, uh, sometimes the world just lines up the right way and you have to take advantage of it uh, when it does. And this is one of those times. Uh, it's just critically important that government do what it needs to do to help the investment and to help move where you're going. Uh, and I can tell you that Wayne County is totally committed uh, to the types of things that are going to help make this happen. One of those, quite simply, is transit. We've got to get people to jobs, uh, and that is important. That's not something we can take lightly, and it's something we have to push forward to try to do. Government can do more to help with workforce development than is currently happening now. I mean, we're all working hard but we're in different silos quite often. And so the importance of government finding out what General Motors needs two years out and communicating that mission to our community colleges and other places so the tune-up can be done at the front end, not trying to catch things uh, at the back end. That's a commitment that government has to make, and I think we are because you know, I'm seeing more and more that when you get a good team, uh, you got to stick with it. I mean, you add to it, you do things. We've got a good team, whether it's private industry uh, or government in this area. You've got to seize this opportunity. We have uh, a number of years that I think we're going to be strong going forward. And so getting people trained, getting them involved in the skilled trades, 
is going to be very, 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 very critical uh, to where we're going. So I'm really excited, you know, been a car guy all my life. I'm waiting for the, uh, the next surge of electric cars, you know, and I'm sitting in my garage at 17 or 18 years old, you know, messing around with my 427 Tri-Power uh, Corvette. You'd think I was a gas junkie forever. Uh, but no, I'm an evolution junkie. And so I, what I want to see is that powerful car in my garage two years from now uh, that's electric, whether it's, uh, whether it's a van, whether it's an uh, SUV, uh, whether it's a pickup truck. So I'm really excited, and uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to come. Mayor, Hamtramck is going to be in a different place. You know, Wayne County has 43 communities. Hamtramck is one of the great ones. Uh, and this will do nothing but make it greater. And my job is to try to keep 43 communities working together and singing out of the same hymn book. Uh, and we're doing a pretty good job of that. So thank you very much. I want to call to the microphone uh, my friend of 30 years, uh, Mayor Mike Duggan of the city of Detroit. Uh, well, in November of 2018, a lot of us probably didn't think this day was coming. Uh, but uh, today, General Motors uh, redeems a promise uh, that they made to the people of the city of Detroit 40 years ago. And a lot of us remember when Mayor Coleman Young moved 4,000 people out of this neighborhood at a time GM was down because the city of Detroit believed in GM's future. Uh, and there are some people I want to thank that made today possible. Uh, governor Whitmer, who is in one year very quickly becoming the auto jobs governor. Uh, thank you for what you did on this. And Jeff Mason and Jeff Donofreo and the team who put together a very complicated deal to make this possible. I want to say a special uh, thank you to Detroit's greatest advocate inside the company, Mark Royce, who we consider Detroit's best friend. He fights for us every step of the way, and he and Mary Barra uh, made a decision that it's not often you see people reverse decisions they announce, uh, but they had uh, the strength of character. Uh, but the single biggest factor in turning this around was the men and women of the UAW and what you did in this last collective bargain agreement. And the folks here, here know, so I'll tell you a little bit about the background. Mark made reference to the, the conversations with me, but the day that GM announced they were doing plant closings across the country and in Canada, I just picked up the phone and called Mary Barra. And we had a long conversation. I think she, the way she answered the phone, she thought she was going to get yelled at. Uh, but it was a quiet conversation. And what I said to her was, the people of this city invested in you. And she went through and said, look, we have too much capacity. She talked about the fact that she was the plant manager in this building and her connection uh, to the plant, but that the cars that were being made here just weren't selling. And I said, Mary, I'm not asking you to extend the production of the vehicles of the past. That doesn't do anybody any good. But you've been headquartered in the city of Detroit for 100 years. We have a special relationship. If you're going to build the vehicles of the future somewhere, why wouldn't you build the future of the vehicles in the city? And can't we partner with you in doing that? And at the end of it, she said, this wasn't the conversation I was expecting. The next day, I was shocked when she called me back. And she says, Mark Royce and I have been talking about this. She says, I'm not making you any promises. But we're going to look seriously at what would it take to build the vehicles of the future here. And in the coming months, they came in, and, and Mary and Mark came in, and they had this plan to do this. But it was going to take more than $2 billion in capital investment, a huge amount of capital investment to put into this plan. And they said, this will only work. I can't commit today. We have to see how the UAW contract comes out. Because if the contract comes out in a way we can't afford this, we can't do it. And I was in touch with the union leaders all the way along. And here's what happened. The UAW leadership made the reinvestment in this plant a huge priority at the bargaining table. From the start of that contract to the end, they were out on strike for five weeks for a whole lot of reasons, and they fought hard for what they wanted. But they never wavered in their commitment to get the reinvestment in Detroit, and I think we ought to give a big hand to the men and women of the UAW who made today possible. Thank you. Uh, so... 
$2.2 billion in this facility, 2,000 jobs. If you haven't seen the crew's origin, go online and find uh, the video. It's the automated vehicles of the future uh, that are going to be made right here. Uh, and the electric vehicles, the SUVs, uh, and the pickups. Here's the truth. Climate change is real. And the future is electric vehicles. Uh, and the future is also automated vehicles. And because of the announcement made here today, I think it shows Mayor Coleman Young was visionary in 1980 because the future of the auto industry is going to remain right here in the city of Detroit and in Hamtramck. And with that, I want to introduce uh, my partner, who's got uh, half of this building, uh, the mayor of Hamtramck, Karen Majewski. Well, good morning. Good morning. So the city of Hamtramck, which is born out of the auto industry, nearly a century ago, um, is pleased to be an integral part of this next revolutionary iteration of auto manufacturing. We applaud General Motors' pledge to invest $2.2 billion in the Detroit Hamtramck Assembly Plant. We share its belief in this facility and this region, and we commit, commend its vision of a new era of electronic vehicles. We are proud to stand with our partners, <clears throat> General Motors, City of Detroit, our governor, and other state and national and local leaders, and UAW Local 22, to stand with them at the forefront of a new generation of manufacturing know-how. Because although we're proud of our history, we're equally committed to our future and to the future of our planet which demands that we move resolutely and with all our ingenuity and resources toward alternative energy options. Hamtramck is proud to be at the forefront of that transformation in this industry, which has meant so much to who we are, and no one will be cheering more enthusiastically than the city of Hamtramck when those first electronic vehicles come off the assembly line right here at DHAM. Thank you. Thank you, mayors. We're proud members of both the communities. Thank you for that. Um, Executive Evans, I'm a car guy too. Thank you. Uh, can't thank you enough for the support, Governor Whitmer. We really appreciate it, and, and I hope we keep meeting like this in the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gerald, you always say that your best days were spent in the plant, and I, and I look forward uh, to spending those great days with you here um, as, we, as we move forward and we create something really special. Mark, I can't thank you enough for the, the commitment on investment and the commitment to us, uh, Mike and I, uh, the entire DHAM team. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do great things here, so thank you for that. Uh, Mike, would you like to come up and say a few words on behalf of the UAW? First, uh, I'd like to thank the membership, Local 22, who has been committed to building cars, uh, whether it's the end of the CT6 and the Impala, and definitely committed to building all electric vehicles here. Um, every day they come to work to do the right thing for General Motors, to do the right thing for their families. And I just want to thank that membership out there that comes to work every day, no matter what it is, um, with their heads held high to build quality vehicles for General Motors. Uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, the local and the state uh, government uh, for coming here and giving the incentives to the uh, company to make this possible, and also to Mark and Gerald um, that we were able to come to an agreement during 2019 bargaining. I know it was a rough, rough, uh, probably three or four months for us. Uh, definitely my hat's off to the people who were on strike for uh, those five weeks but we were able to come to an agreement um, that was both best for the membership, for the company, and also the community surrounding. Um, so we definitely welcome this investment. Uh, we are gonna do any and everything it takes to make this possible. Um, and uh, we will definitely take this into the future. Thank you.
Okay, please be safe as you leave the, the building, and please be safe as, as we do the media interviews as well. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your day.